On today's show, rumors of vehicle-to-grid capabilities hidden in current production Teslas get debunked, but that doesn't mean that we won't see it at some point in the future. General Motors provides more information on the forward compatibility of its Ultimum battery system, and Google says it's swearing off using artificial intelligence to help the fossil fuel industry. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. It is fantastic to see things back to normal for Kiwis and I hope that you are enjoying the weather before it gets too cold. Oh, and if we could just have a little word about borrowing Jacinda for a while over here in the US, I, I think she might be a little bit more effective than you know who. We start today's show with the claims made earlier this week that Tesla has started putting power circuitry inside the Model 3 and also Model Y that would allow AC vehicle to grid capabilities further down the line. The claims came from a European software engineer who had taken a Tesla charger apart. The story broke early in the week and several news outlets ran with it. But Phil Sado, aka Engineerix on YouTube, showed midweek that on a 2018 Tesla Model 3 board, at least power was only capable of traveling one way, not both. We made a video on his discoveries and while there have been many arguing the opposite, stating that we're basing our analysis on old tech, I should note that the diagram published with the original story was also dated 2018. V2G may happen in the future, but not, as far as we can tell, right now. And even then, it'll probably only use high voltage DC connections, as some of Tesla's software seems to allude to. Back in March, General Motors unveiled the new Ultium battery system it had designed for future BEV3 platform electric vehicles, including the upcoming Hummer EV and Cadillac Lyric EV. At that event, GM did detail some of the features of the new battery system, but this week it held a call with journalists that went far more in depth. During the call, we were told about how GM's new battery technology uses a series of smart modules, each with their own wireless battery management system, cooling and battery cells. These modules are then placed together to form whatever battery pack capability is required. GM has developed this system to be forward compatible, meaning owners of vehicles will be able to replace battery modules as and when required with the latest technology. It's all pretty clever stuff. As countries around the world slowly return to normal, at least something approaching normal, the team at Rimac Automobili in Croatia have been resuming their hard work getting the upcoming Rimac C2 supercar ready for series production. That means new episodes of the now standard Mondays with Mate on the firm's YouTube channel. Uh, that's Mate Rimac, founder of the company. The last two episodes have not only given us a sneak peek of how testing of the C2 is progressing by getting a ride along with the company's test driver, but also see a deep dive into the super high power inverter at the heart of the more than one megawatt power electronics that gives the C2 its insane performance. You should watch. They're definitely worth watching. Volkswagen has announced this week that it's got buy-in from all of its German dealerships concerning the way in which its ID family of electric vehicles will be sold. Rather than have the dealerships be the primary initial point of contact for customers, Volkswagen says its new ID sales model will see customers place orders for the ID online, with customers buying their cars directly from the automaker. Volkswagen will also take control of all of financing concerns for ID vehicles without any dealer input. The dealers, meanwhile, will provide test drives, assist with servicing and take care of final vehicle handover. It's a smart move in terms of sales as it will help eliminate dealer misinformation. But in a week where Volkswagen published an overtly racist social media campaign, well, it is the least of the company's worries right now. At least I'd suggest so. Tesla has now successfully reopened its Fremont production facility and midweek sent an email to employees recalling them all to work. With the facility now back to full staff operation, Tesla has also dropped the legal case against Alameda County it had been threatening.
While Tesla had previously said that employees who felt unsafe returning to work would be able to stay at home with no pay, Tesla has now reinstated its attendance policy, which means staff can only stay home on unpaid leave with zero consequences if they believe they may expose an at-risk family member to COVID-19. While staff are happy to be back at work, some have also expressed concerns anonymously to various outlets about the tight working conditions and concern that physical distancing guidelines are not being fully followed, although masks are now said to be provided and worker temperatures are being taken as they enter the building. Volvo has released a new walk-around video for the upcoming XC40 Recharge electric SUV, giving customers a little more eye candy before deliveries start later this year. The video features four of the team responsible for designing and building the XC40 and covers everything from design elements through to its load carrying and towing capabilities, location of emergency equipment, charging and telematics, and even individual configuration options for the driver's information display and Google-based touchscreen navigation system. It's really very in-depth, but it is the only time I've ever seen an automaker go to great lengths to sell the various features of the product without making excuses because it's electric. Frankly, I would love to see more companies make customer-focused deep dive videos like this. I think it would do a lot of good. Tesla has reportedly been visiting a number of sites recently in the US with a view to choosing a place to build its promised Tesla Terra Factory. The facility will be home to Tesla's Cybertruck as well as Model Y and potentially other models too. While Tesla hasn't confirmed exactly where this Terra Factory will be built, the leading favourite right now is this site to the northeast of Austin, Texas. Thanks to Smart Charge America, we got some photos of the site early on in the week, and then Brian Rosetsky from Rosetsky Photography reached out at the end of the week and offered us this fabulous drone footage over the same site. With a railroad logistics site adjacent to the facility, it certainly looks perfect for a large automotive production part. But with no contracts signed right now, it's really a little up in the air as to exactly where the final facility will be. Watch this space and thanks to Brian for the video. Software giant Google has put its artificial intelligence systems to all kinds of uses over the years, from helping it advance autonomous driving tech to finding exoplanets and detecting breast cancer with a better accuracy than the human eye. But it's also been used over the years to help oil and gas companies continue to search for and then extract fossil fuels from the earth, with Amazon, Microsoft and Google all guilty of helping big oil continue to exploit the planet. This week, however, in response to a new Greenpeace report which highlighted the part all three companies play in the oil and gas industry, Google said that it would no longer, quote, build custom artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms to facilitate upstream extraction of the oil and gas industry. Neither Amazon nor Microsoft made any overtures to exiting the segment. Chinese firm Esfalt has hosted the launch of its new cobalt-free lithium-ion battery cell, which it says is now entering into production. Esvolt is a spin-off of Great Wall Motors in China. It says the new cobalt-free batteries have a longer cell life, higher energy density, and are a lot safer than cells containing cobalt. To demonstrate the capabilities of the new chemistry, it's been working with its parent company, Great Wall Motors, to use the new L6 cobalt-free long cell battery in one of Great Wall Motors' high-end models. It claims a range of up to 880 kilometers should be possible with this new pack chemistry in use. At the moment, I do have very limited information about this car and the launch, but I'm hoping to cover it more comprehensively soon to see if the battery stands up to the claims made of it. And finally, convertibles are fun. I've owned a soft top before and most car people I know have at some point or other owned some form of drop top in order to enjoy a bit of summer driving along country lanes. But not all vehicles work as convertibles and not all cars should be made into a convertible. Yet Newport Commercial Engineering, a California firm well known for chopping the roof off everything, literally from a Ford F-150 to a Bentley and yes, a Tesla Model S, has just published photographs of its first Tesla Model 3 convertible. You too could have a Tesla Model 3 converted by the company, but should you wish, 
that cost is going to be expensive. Rumors are that it's an eye-watering 30,000 US dollars. I'm sure beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but honestly, the Model 3 is one car I would rather not see with the roof down, especially with winter on the way. And on that note, we are completely done for today's show. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you're at it, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. That's if you haven't already. It's super easy to make the switch. And if you do, you're going to help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green, renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for many generations to come. We'll be making some more fun content for you all to enjoy next week. But until then, please stay safe. Remember to wash your hands, enjoy the rest of your weekend and keep healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.